Okay, so when I was thinking of a topic for my Shakespeare paper, I was like, what topic has not been rehashed over and over again when it comes to Shakespeare? So I'm bouncing back ideas with some friends and I get a message and essentially my friend goes, well, was he a lover or was he a cynic? I was like, he was a cynic. So I did a close reading of some of his plays, one of which was A Midsummer Night's Dream, where I looked at the different humor and exaggerations within the play and how they showed the fleetingness, the instability, and the superficial nature of infatuation or love. Well, in A Midsummer Night's Dream, we have the scene where Demetrius is affected by Puck when he uses a magical flower to make him fall in love with whoever he sees first when he wakes up. Well, this scene represents the trope of love at first sight. Well, with all this ridiculousness that happens when he wakes up and sees Helena immediately falls in love with her after exclaiming that he would never fall in love with her and he hates her, this exaggeration, this humor shows that the love at first sight could not happen unless an impossible outside unnatural force acts upon the players or the lovers in the play. Um, also in this scene, we've got Demetrius boasting about his love for Helena and how she is this goddess, this nymph, and how crystals are muddy compared to her eyes. And this, these exaggerations of his passion also is like a satire that makes fun of the passion that we always associate with love. Well, towards the end of the play, we have the famous Pyramus and Thisbe scene where the laborers put on this play based on what they assume the aristocrats think love is. Well, everything goes awry and becomes this big comedy that the aristocrats laugh at. Now, the aristocrats in this scene actually represent the audience watching A Midsummer Night's Dream because the audience, while watching this love story unfold, laughing at it the entire time, while th believing that these representations are what they define love as, become the people who are laughing at this play, laughing at their own beliefs, therefore laughing at themselves. Shakespeare has the audience essentially making fun of themselves. I've done some other close readings of other plays, like As You Like It, um, where we've got the kiss being compared to an orator spitting when he has nothing else to say. So, after looking at these, is Shakespeare in love or not? And my conclusion is that he was not. Thank you.